All right. Let's start with an introduction to React. React is a declarative component-based UI library to build user interfaces. So React is used for what we call the front end, which is the part that the user sees, and it has to do with all the, let's call them, animation, features, calculation that happen on the user device. Uh, the front end um, has, let's say, two parts, a part of the user interface, the part the user actually sees, and then there is a part that the user doesn't necessarily see, which has to do with the way we store data in their devices uh, through local storage or cookie, which we're going to go through, and uh, the way we fetch data through a tool called Axios, which we're going to go through as well. Uh, it's declarative, which means that they tell the browser what it should be showing and not how to build it, and that's very important. And uh, the simple reason why this is important is because it makes writing code very, very simple. So that's what declarative means for us. It means that it makes it easy for you. Second part is front end, again, what the user sees. Third thing is component based, which means that we need to think in components, which is one of the biggest aspects of React. React is basically components, states, and uh, very little else. So why React? First of all, it forces you to write good code. I love that. Second one, component focus which means that every file is a component, which means that you're going to write very small files. So projects are very easy to manage with React. Third thing, amazing tools. In my opinion, some of the best tools are built on top of React, so I love it. Third one, fourth one, you can build web apps, mobile apps and desktop apps with the same knowledge. So once you're done with this course, you will be able to take um, additional uh, you're going to have to learn additional skills, but they're going to be in your ball core. It's going to be fairly easy for you to pick up these new skills, which will allow you to turn the web apps that we're going to build into mobile apps or desktop apps, which is amazing. So the first three steps that we need to take are installing Node.js. Once we install Node.js, we need to install React, and then we are going to see what the app is. So first thing, to install Node.js, we can go to nodejs.org.en, or we may as well just Type in Node.js download. That's all you have to do. Download Node.js from Node.js.org. And whatever is your source, you're going to press the button, you let it done, and it's going to be done. Once you have Node, you're going to be able to type in Node here. And that means that uh, you basically have a, a JavaScript interpreter in your a browser. So X plus, what you free, blah, 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 is that. So that's basically the terminal that we, or the, the developer console that we had on the browser. Now we have it on our machine. And Node also allows us to use NPM. We're going to uh, go out. I'm going to press Command K to clear my console. And NPM to see that I have NPM, which is the tool that will allow us to download React. So the second step that we're going to take is we're going to download this thing called Create React App, which is basically a simplified version of uh, a React app. We're going to be able to use React without having to go too, too deep into the technicalities. In order to find out, we're just going to type re, uh, create React app install on Google. And the first result is going to say getting started from create react app, re, react app dev. And we're just going to follow the instructions and they're very simple. Once you've installed a node, you navigate to the folder that you want to use. In my case, it's going to be desktop, entrepreneur, to our intro programming. And then I'm just going to do exactly what it says. MPX, create React app, my app, where MPX is the tool that will install. What is going to install? The create React app. And uh, the name of the folder is going to be called my app. In our case, just for to show you that it works, I'm going to do MPX, create React app, and then I'm going to call it first dash app. It's going to start, um, I already have a file, wow, <laughs> interesting, so I'm just going to call it second app then, <laughs> in my case. If you, um, the quick two second introduction to the terminal, if you want to change directory to cd, and then you type in the name of the folder that you want to change to. If you want to make a folder, you just do mkdir, uh, and then the name of folder, and then you can do cd name of folder and you're in. And that's basically all you need to know. And to go back, you do cd dot dot and you can go back. 
and column K clears the console, which is fairly useful. So in the meantime, that uh, MPX install, we're going to do a tour of what the app is going to look like. So I'm going to open up my IDE, Atom.io in my case. I'm going to do Command O to open up uh, the files. I'm going to navigate to Entrepreneur to our first app, which is the one that I have previously installed. I forgot about it, but this is the app that you're installing right now. And the three things I want you to notice are, first of all, we have a, a folder, let's call it folder structure. And the folder structure is uh, we have a dot .git, a dot .git folder that is, uh, mm, uh, it looks passive, it's, it's disabled, it looks as if it's disabled, although it's not. A node modules folder that again looks disabled, and then we have a public, a source, and a bunch of files. So dot .git is used to track changes in what is called um, source code uh, management tool, or um, code versioning system, CVS. Uh, in this case, it's git. Uh, it's a very simple tool, probably we're going to have an additional lecture on it. And uh, you just leave it as it is. The same thing goes for the node module folder. Node modules are basically the stuff that was installed. Like all this stuff that you saw, installing, blah, 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 that goes into the node modules. And uh, uh, basically by installing Node.js and NPM, which is the node packet manager, we access the work of thousands, if not millions of developers. And that gives us enormous power. It gives us the ability to tap into their open source contributions. And it basically allows us to download incredible components, incredible functionalities out of the, that we get out of the box just because we tap into NPM, which is it's remarkable. Like If you look at how generous the community of developer is, it's a fairly incredible thing. So the, the other two folders are the public folder, which is the, the folder that contains the data that is going to be sent to the user. As you may or may not know, when a, a user visits a website, they get sent a file or a bunch of files. Typically, they get sent a file called index.html, which is the one that you're seeing here, which, as you can see, has basically nothing in it. And they get sent this file. And then from this file, uh, you may include other uh, references. For example, we have a bunch of references here uh, of stuff that gets included. So this is basically what gets sent to the user. Then the source folder is the one that we're going to work on. This is the folder where we're going to be the most comfortable with because we're going to have to make all the changes to the app there. And very quickly, the other files, the package.json file is a file that is used by uh, Node.js and NPM to manage um, basically the, uh, the, the dependencies and, these, um, and the, uh, the, like the, um, the application as a whole. A way uh, in which you can call an application is a package. You can consider that as a package where the application name would be the name of the package and then it does a bunch of stuff based on what you call. Uh, we'll probably, we're, we will get deep into this, so uh, don't worry about it for now. Basically, uh, just know that thanks to this package file, I can just send you this and uh, your own NPM installation will be able to figure out what it needs to install and what it needs for dependencies so that we can both run the same code. So this is a great way to, I would say, uh, reduce download sizes. Instead of having to download all these node modules uh, and put them in source control, we can just remove them from source control, which is why they are, uh, look like they are disabled, uh, because they are not into source control. Uh, and this uh, package.json elegantly sums up what, it, what needs to be downloaded to get it to work. So with that said, we're now ready to start building our new components. So I can't wait for that.